Hey everybody, BTFMC 1984 here again, and today I'll be doing a review on this Transformers Beast Wars Buzzsaw. Now this is the Takara version I just recently picked up for about 12 bucks at a used bookstore or media store now. This is, of course, the D9 Takara 1995 release of Buzzsaw. The uh, reason why I picked this thing up is because it's the Takara version. Um, I never owned the original 96 uh, Waspinator or Buzzsaw molding, which this one is derived from. And I've never owned a Takara Transformers figure. Uh, usually they're now like really expensive to get a hold of and importing fees it's just was never really um, worth getting in my opinion but for 12 bucks this was a bargain because it was basically a mint package and I've tried doing this review a couple times I've taken them out of the box so there's some new damage to the uh, spine of the box right here that was not prevalent when I first got him but he is a transformer so he, and he was real cheap, and he doesn't go for that much any on eBay, and I don't plan on selling him or getting rid of him anytime soon, so I figured I would uh, actually open up and enjoy him. But you can see this really nice uh, hologram, and I'm guessing that this says Transformers. I saw some other pictures of Takara and uh, U.S. Transformer toys, so I'm having a feeling that says Transformers. I don't know if it says Beast Wars or not. I know it says D9, and it says Buzzsaw. I'm pretty sure that's what it that writing right there is. See, it's 1995 Takara. All the Japanese writing, whatever sticker this says, 100% CG. So I don't know if that means, whatever that means. Uh, anyone that can read Japanese, please, if you could translate some of the stuff, like what it says right here underneath the uh, product, or uh, the Insecticon, not Insecticon, but the Predacon logo. Uh, here's just the top of the box, how he transforms, uh, another side of him holding his weapon, some other writing, a really nice obligatory uh, shot of all the figures that were in the line. I don't think all of them were released in the United States. I think there's a different wave of them that were available in Japan, and the United States always has different ones, but you can see like Optimus Prime. Uh, I'm not sure with all the characters. There's Buzzsaw right there. Waspinator up there. Some the Arachnid. Scorpion Nox. I think that's what his name is. Uh, Rat Trap. Some other little... Here's really nice. You got a nice little image of Megatron right there. And of course, like Ashens would say, uh, Pac-Man can't eat this pellet. And you don't want to launch the uh, missile into the kid's eye. Uh, warning, probably saying not for uh, kids under a certain age. Uh, you know, projectile will kill them. <laughs> made in China, of all places. A Japanese toy made in China. On this side, more images. Probably just, you know, talking about the missile and him. Now, what I've read up on him, he is almost exactly like a uh, Waspinator, but he's more of a coward. He's kind of like uh, the anime uh, Transformers anime um, Starscream when he had split up into those different personalities. There was really, really a coward one, so I guess that's where he comes from. So enough showing him in the box. Let me get him out and I'll show you how sweet he really is. So I'll be right back. Okay, and here he is out of his package and prison. And I gotta say, he is pretty awesome outside of his box. Uh, I know a lot of people probably are thinking, you know, oh, you, he's mint in, he was mint in box, why'd you take him out? But, you know what, you need to enjoy these guys. I mean, these are reason why Transformers are good toys because they're meant to be taken out of their package. Now, to prove that he was never really open before me, this is his little bio card and instruction manual. Still taped up. Never, tape has never been pulled up. Here's right here. It has never been opened up. So and it's going to stay like that because his transmission is pretty simple. Uh, so, and I've seen a couple videos of Waspinator and another Buzzsaw, so I know how he works. So here is the bio card if you want to take a look. If you can read all that stuff, all the stats. 
Uh, I will also leave in the description below the uh, Transformers wiki page that has all of his bio and how he is. So this is basically the figure. His weapon stores on his back, his storex, and his missiles actually do store under his wings. So it's kind of nice that how all the weapons and everything like that just store in place. A lot of Transformers don't really do that. Now, as a flying uh, Transformer, he does show a lot of his robot bits. You do see his arms right here, and if you uh, pull them upside down, you'll see his the cutaway of the head and the fists, and of course the legs are really out of place with these back legs. Which is kind of unfortunate, but then again, a lot of these early toys were like that, and a lot of the flying Transformers all suffer from kibbling being exposed. Now, if you have the uh, U.S. version of them, you'll notice there's some differences. U.S. version would be all green, where all these uh, uh, gray bits are, and this purple, I believe, was a little bit lighter of a color on the U.S. version. And where his head placement is on this one is different a little bit as well. Now, Transform, he's fairly simple. You just want to pull the uh, gun out. You want to come up to the legs. You want to unpeg them from here. Just pull them down a little bit. Now, this is kind of a tricky part. Because you got to rotate the uh, leg around. Which I could see how that could have, you know, allowed the... Older ones are going to be loose in those ball joints because of moving around. And there's a peg here and a little hole here. Just line them up and they tab in really nice. I mean, this is, for an older one, it pegs in nicer than some of the new ones. Now you just want to take this gray section here, lift it up while rotating the uh, hips. Pull it down and it just locks into place and it locks in pretty decently now you, there are a couple tabs on the arms but for some reason it just doesn't want to stick so you just want to pull the arms out spread them up and there's his head want to kind of pull the want to actually get these wings in a different position if you can have them in the back or have them facing up I'm gonna have them like that pull these arms out and you want to split the head a little bit and then pop it off the hooks and it just dangles down slide the head bits forward and there's a couple little notches here and there's a hole here so there's gonna be a notch on this part of the head you just plug it into that side and plug this piece into that head Outside, just kind of line and get, line it up a little bit. There we go. Straighten the arms out a little bit. Now it's your preference on where you would want the uh, the insect legs. Kind of leave them up because it just helps with a little bit of clearance with the wings. And of course, there is his head. And we get his gun in his arm. Hand, and there he is in r robot mode, and which is really really nice uh, for it for being you know a toy almost 10 years old at least back in 95 96, and it being never really played with it holds up all the joints are nice and tight, nothing really too loose except for maybe a little bit of the arms where they don't really want to connect into the bottom part of his chest. Let's get a look at his robot face. Now, the way that I've heard the story was with Beast Wars, they were supposed to all have robot faces, but unfortunately, like Waspinator, he was given his mutant face. So this would, would have been the face of Waspinator had they gone with the uh, human face, not the uh, mutant face. Which is really nice. I mean, the paint apps are beautiful. It does have a little bit of light piping, but it's kind of hindered because this uh, thicker, opaque, uh, meta or this pearlescent green, blue, uh, does kind of hinder a tad bit. But all in all, it's a really nice um, figure. Now, if you wanted to have him as looking like Waspinator, 
what you do is just unhook the head or unhook the, you know the bug head kind of turn the head a little bit pop this panel up and pop the chest and rotate it around and we get everything hooked in lock it and there is the waspinator face or buzzsaw's face in mutant form and you can see the light piping a little bit I'm just trying to see if I can't get to get dark and light yeah it's a little bit hard because it's a thicker of a plastic so it's not going to really show up as well but you know back in his regular head because that kind of helps the you know the uh, kind of helps distinguish the two characters like I said he is supposed to be a little bit of a wuss and like I said I'll have the link in the bottom of his bio on Transformers wiki but I mean other than that he is a pretty decent figure now as part as far as articulation goes ball joint at the hip the uh, kind of a ball joint or a ball joint at the knee no ankle movement uh, no waist articulation arms ball joint got a swivel up at the th bicep elbow which kind of gets broken up a little bit broken elbow syndrome head on a nice ball joint so you can get some good dramatic poses from him and of course the wings are on a ball joint as well you can get him to position pretty good you get him in flight kind of looking shooting down and like I said his weapons there's missiles do store on the wings and you just put them in here and fire okay that was a dud fire okay so they're not the strongest of missiles but I mean at least it's a spring loaded and not that little cheap gimmick of the oh, what was it like little pressure sensitive one so yeah that is basically it for buzzsaw now if you don't have a waspinator or a buzzsaw in your collection and you can find this one fairly cheap I'd say go out and get him he is definitely one for the Beast Wars collection and he only really appeared in the comic book a couple of times and that was about it and he's got kind of an interesting little backstory uh, so you can actually you know have your own character since he was not really a part of the original cartoon now for a size comparison here he is next to MP10 and MP10 does tower over this little guy now in the original cartoon for Beast Wars he would have been even smaller I think he probably would have come up maybe to the grill section or maybe to the size of the windows depending on how they were continuity wise they were doing because I know in the episode where they run into the Autobots uh, Optimus Primal was a bit small I think he came right up to the windows so and of course for some reason these guys can got bigger so he was as big as a T-Rex but other than that he is a real nice figure and of course getting him for about 12 bucks did not hurt either now just to do what everybody else does to get him back into robot or into beast mode what you want to do is kind of tilt the head around unhook the head pieces just kind of dang around kind of give him the lock in together Let's come around here to the legs flip these around lock in that piece unhook the legs kind of rotate everything back around lock those in place undo this leg as well some rotations get everything undone 
Alright, rotate that leg. Fold the arms back down. Kind of get them to lock into their perspective places. Come on. And fold all the way around. Get them in there. Get the wings up. And get the gun back in his thorax. So there is good old Buzzsaw. Like I said, if you can get him for a decent price, I'd say pick him up. Uh, you're not probably not going to always find him in his box. And always look underneath the wings to make sure his missiles are still available. And like I said, there are two different versions. If you find one that's got gray bits instead of green, that means you found a Takara. If it's green instead of gray, then that is a U.S. release. So that is it on my look on Bustle. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and see you guys later.